This week on Life in the Park, Senior Engineering Project Manager Joseph Shamla tells us about the implications affecting motorists during the major reconstruction of Highway 100 in the park. We'll get the latest updates on City Council actions and take a look at current headlines on news you can use. Welcome to the inaugural edition of Life in the Park. I'm Jane Kim. St. Louis Park has seen several major road construction projects take place over the last few years. The overpass at Wooddale Avenue and Highway 7, immediately followed by the Highway 7 and Louisiana Avenue interchange project, was completed just this past fall. Preliminary work has begun on the Highway 100 reconstruction project here in the park. This is the last section of the old Beltline Highway to be modernized, eliminating one of the worst bottlenecks in the metro area. Scott Smith sat down with Senior Engineering Project Manager Joseph Shamla to explain how this project will affect motorists who live, work, or just drive through the park on a daily basis. But first, here's a quick look at news you can use in the park. Help raise 100,000 pounds and dollars during March for STEP, the St. Louis Park Emergency Program Food Shelf. Each March, the annual Minnesota Food Share campaign focuses on a statewide effort to stock Minnesota food shelves. This food, shelf is, this food drive is essential to STEP, providing a variety of healthy food items to those in need within our community. Please collect food for the month of March and donate to STEP by Friday, April 3rd. Good news for St. Louis Park Comcast customers. A new Comcast Xfinity Customer Service Center opened in St. Louis Park on February 16th. The Xfinity store is located at 4620 Excelsior Boulevard, so customers can stop by in person to exchange or return equipment, see demonstrations of new services, or ask questions about their services or bill. The Xfinity store is open daily from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., Monday through Saturday, and from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sunday. St. Louis Park is one of the top 100 best places to live in the United States, according to the editors at livability.com. In honoring St. Louis Park with the award, the editors recognize the 2,700 businesses operating in St. Louis Park, including Park Nicollet Health Services and the award-winning St. Louis Park School District, where all of its schools are recognized as Blue Ribbon Schools of Excellence by the U.S. Department of Education. Livability.com evaluated amenities, demographics, economy, education, healthcare, housing, social and civic capital, and transportation. Editors reviewed data from more than 2,000 communities across the country, and St. Louis Park ranked 27th out of 100 cities. St. Louis Park also holds the designation as a five-time winner as one of the 100 best places for young people by America's Promise Alliance. Now to our cover story on the Highway 100 reconstruction project in the park. Scott Smith sat down with Senior Engineering Project Manager Joseph Shamla for an update. Today we're with the Senior Engineering Project Manager for the City of St. Louis Park, Joseph Shamla. Joe's going to talk about the Highway 100 reconstruction project that's underway, especially now that the Highway 100 or the bridge over Highway 100 on Mintaga Boulevard is closed. Thanks for joining us, Joe. Okay, the bridge is closed over, over 100 on Mintaga Boulevard. What is the best way to uh, get around uh, the construction project? So with the closure of the Minnetonka Boulevard Bridge, the detour route will be Lake Street to Wooddale Avenue to Highway 7 back to Ottawa Avenue. How long uh, do we expect the bridge to be closed? When will the, new one, will the new one be completed? Probably a better question. So with the closure of the Minnetonka Boulevard Bridge, the contractor has 200 days from the first date to complete the bridge and open it back to traffic. And the next big event uh, during the reconstruction is going to be the removal and replacement of the Highway 7 bridge. When is that to take place, Joe? Upon completion of the Minnetonka Boulevard bridge and reopening to traffic, um, it allows the contractor to start the closures of Highway 100 to remove the Highway 7 bridge. So the Highway 7 bridge will start upon the completion of a Minnetonka Boulevard. I was driving down 100 yesterday, in fact, and one of the railroad bridges is down and one of them is still up. Is the, are they going to replace the one that's torn down and then remove the other one? Is that how that's going to work? What's happening there is it's, the bridge needs to be staged to, to keep rail traffic in order. Um, the tracks have been shifted above and, um, well, they construct the new bridge. The new bridge is wide enough to accommodate light rail. As um, soon as the new bridge is completed, they'll route the 
the rail traffic back onto the new bridge, and then it enables them to start construction on their pedestrian bridge, um, which will be a new bridge across Highway 100. Upon completion of the pedestrian bridge, the existing bridge that you see up there today will be removed. Well, the Highway 100 reconstruction project is immense. When is it to be totally completed? So the, the completion date for Highway 100 is anticipated for the fall of 2016. Um, there may be some restoration in 2017, but all lanes should be open to traffic at the end of 2016. All right, Joe, and finally, what is the best way to keep up to date on the construction progress of the highway? The construction updates page on the MnDOT website is the best way. Thanks to Joe Shamla for that update. On Friday, March 27th at 9 p.m., crews will begin reducing lanes and closing the ramps on Highway 100 between I-394 and Highway 62. By 10 p.m., the highway and all the ramps will be completely closed. The road and ramps will reopen by 5 p.m. 5 a.m. Monday, March 30th. When the road reopens on March 30th, motorists will encounter delays on Highway 100 between West 36th Street and Berry Street as the highway will be reduced to two lanes in each direction. Next week, Life in the Park will focus on Muddy Paws. It's probably not what you think. In City Council news, Connect to the Park is the city's 10-year plan to add additional sidewalks, trails, bike lanes, and bikeways throughout the community. The Connect the Park initiative will work toward implementing many of the elements of this plan over the next 10 years. St. Louis Park City Council members voted recently and approved the plan. It is estimated to cost between $17 and $24 million paid through general obligation bonds that the city will develop, according to Jack Sullivan, the plan's senior engineering project manager. That's it for this edition of Life in the Park. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Park TV. Hey.